Hello everybody. Uh, happy Wednesday to you. It's Wednesday the uh, something 10th of October. Uh, still plugging away at the old Minoth characters. Uh, trying to get these last metal ones painted up still. To get them all finished up. I've got most of the uh, the base coats on. Just need to get the uh, last little fiddly bits together and then start so I can well, so I can coat them with the uh, quick shade. It's going to be getting too cold for that in the next couple months so I need to make sure I get this all done. I've got these guys, the knights and the uh, rest of the temple flame guard. I am got, glad that I started the uh, flame guard uh, command first because that gives me a really, it, it helps me see what I want to do with the flame guard uh, and how I want to paint them what all I want to do with them the uh, command thing there again but uh, I haven't decided if I'm going to paint the cross gold or black uh, most of the minifix crosses are black which actually the one on the flag needs to be black I need to paint that back ground a brighter red a nice flame of Minoth which I should do that before I paint the cross Oop. before I paint the cross so yeah we'll paint the cross black but uh... been a very good week uh, no ER or ENT visits for us they did uh, pull out everything from the kids nose successfully uh, he's perfectly fine though he has he has learned his lesson I do believe so, because he has not shown any interest in placing anything in his nose except for his own finger. Which, like all, like well, like a good many two-year-olds, he likes to pick his nose. But, uh, get to go on a field trip with my older boy on Friday. We're going to go there going to a corn maze, which is a... I don't know, is is that an American phenomenon where they build, they plant corn and then let it grow and it creates a maze that you can wander through and they change it each year? Which I don't have any any high hopes that my son will be able to find his way quickly through the the maze as he can't see above three and a half feet tall. But that's neither here nor there. It'll be good father-son time. And that's why I get to go. But uh, our new TV is very exciting. It's one of those uh, Ultra HD or Super HD, 4K HD TVs. Uh, which really shows how much technology has come in the last 10 years. Because ours was... Uh, 10 years ago, the TV that just died... Uh, it was top of the line. It actually cost three times as much as we paid for the one that we bought. But, uh, and at the time, its picture was amazing. But then over time, of course, the picture degraded due to uh, faulty manufacturing. And also just, it relatively degraded because of the advance in technology. Which makes me, well, that's, that's a different track. But uh, anyway... TV looks nice. All the stuff that I have. And so I've been, I've been putting different movies in because it has that super high, like greater than 60 frames per second refresh rate. And it kind of makes everything look like a soap opera. Like uh, the, the quality of film and everything, it makes it look very soap opera y, which is interesting. And so I put the, uh, the Hobbit Blu ray in because, you know, Peter Jackson filmed everything in 48 frames per second uh, 3D, all like ultra high definition. And that looks interesting. I mean, it looks very, it looks like I'm there watching everything. It does make the, uh, the only downside is it makes the CGI more observable. There's not as much blur in the CGI for whatever reason. Which, you know, that's not a bad de bad thing, but for The Hobbit, you know, that they did a lot more CGI than some of the other movies. But, 
it also every, every time I rewatch any part of the Hobbit movies I get disappointed because Martin Freeman was such a daggum good Bilbo and they wasted it on a movie that was too long and too Hollywood I mean if you watch the movie and here I'm going to go off on a tirade so forgive me if you watch the movie or any of the three movies let's move this down here let's focus up so you guys can watch me paint because that's surely what you're there for uh, it's almost like they shot vignettes and each of the vignettes is connected uh, only by a wipe scene like you know they the and I like there's not a connected feel between all the scenes for me and they spent way too much time on trying to build individual character for all the dwarves which you know it's 14 people well 13 dwarves <laughs> and a wizard and a hobbit and we've already got the wizard established from the first movies the Lord of the Rings movies so we really don't need to spend a lot of time on him and the Hobbit book was all about Bilbo's journey and the the dwarves were they were there but you know they they looked at him as an employee with a few exceptions like Balin became really good friends with him in the book but mostly I mean the reason they had Bilbo was to do work for them and the reason he came along was to do work for them and they changed Bilbo's character in there and they make him you know the whole See, and it's been it's been long enough to where I feel I can spoiler the first movie a little bit. You know, where they get he gets taken down to Goblin Town. He's leaving, like he's abandoning the the dwarves, and don't it doesn't even take into fact that he's abandoning the dwarves in uh, the Misty Mountains, high up on the mountain sides, and he's got to walk all the way back home across. You know, go down, go back down to Rivendell, go and then go all the way home all by himself. You know, he's leaving there, and it's, you know, that would not even, that's, that's just ridiculous. But, um, you know, he never, he thought often, you know, why, well, you know, boy, he regretted his decision a lot in the book. But he did not ever feel like turning around and going home. You know, that's, and that, to me, that's a, that's a major departure from the character of Bilbo that is as unforgivable as the inclusion of an elven dwarf love try love interest but that's a whole new kettle of fish and that's a, that's a that's a digression i do do beg your pardon But, uh, I mean, I haven't bought the third movie, mainly because the, the grasp of tactics and the change in the battle of five armies is so massively disappointing that I just can't, I can't make myself watch it again. Even, even if Billy Connolly is day into the Iron Hills, which, you know, that's, that's hilarious enough to be interesting. And uh, even Games Workshop didn't really boost anything because all their Hobbit stuff, they released so much of the Hobbit stuff in Finecast that it was, I just didn't even bother buying it. Didn't even bother buying it. But... But other than that, I mean, the, the, the cinematography was good on The Hobbit. The pictures, the picture quality is amazing. There's a lot of really good stuff. It's just that it doesn't quite hold a candle to uh, the Lord of the Rings movies. And even then, though, he changed some of the characters, like Aragorn's character, which I think I've, I've 
groused upon before. So I won't tell him to do that again. Or a Faramir's character. Or... I think I've got a Faramir and an Aragorn. Faramir and an Aragorn miniature somewhere around here. I can probably paint those up one day. But but yeah, so but uh you may may notice there is not a whine in the background of uh, this and that's because I realized that the fan on my computer which is right behind it's right there uh behind the behind the camera it you know it was it was it's a white noise that I never really paid any attention to and all of a sudden you know I'm I'm listening to my own videos and it sounds like I'm working in an industrial shop with a giant uh evacuation fan going on in the background and so I had to had to fix that but but yeah overall uh, still painting away trying to get things done it's getting close to Halloween getting close to my older boy's birthday he'll be five and then six weeks later my younger boy will be three and uh, so yeah really enjoying the videos love to watch what people are doing love to see what what new projects are going on? I uh, wish I really wish I could do Spooky Toberfest. I've got I, I even have the perfect model that I thought about, and it's the uh, the clam pack uh, plastic necromancer that they released a few years ago. He would have been a fun one to paint up, but uh, we'll see. Uh, maybe I'll do a Spooky Toberfest and like an anti Valentine Spooky Tober month. That would be fun. <laughs> anyway, I uh, hope you guys are having a good day, and I'll talk at you later. Adios.